thanks to another vintage TV collector, we was able to find a used 25 foot cable. I find it kind of interesting that this cable has a white connector on the end where the cable that I'm using with, with the, that's been cut is kind of a cream color. I guess they use two different ends, so I can come up with for an answer there. But anyway, we've got to clean this cable up. So I'm going to try to leave it in the box and just unroll it as I clean it. We'll see how that works. I think I can put the box on the floor right over here and then drape the cable along the workbench and clean it as I go. But really happy to find this. And I, I appreciate a fellow collector helping me out on it. Well, I've been trying to decide how I can clean this cable and not get my bench all dirty and sticky with this residue that's on it. So, I have to credit Rita with this idea take garbage bags and I'm gonna just cut the edge on each edge where they will unfold and now I've got about a six foot area there that I can protect my workbench with so let's get started cleaning on this thing I have two different kinds of hand cleaner I think they're pretty much the same product but these have scrubbers or little granules in there that makes them work a little better this orange goop it's got a citrus odor so I'm inclined to use it I had to get rid of some of the odor that's in the old cable too so let's see what happens got me a nylon brush and I got a roll of paper towels over there so you know I guess the first thing I could try just to spray it with some Windex and wipe it off. I doubt that this would do a whole lot, but we'll try it. It's not going to do much. It gets a little of the dirt off the outside, but it doesn't get the sticky off. Well, the hand cleaner is working but it's going to be slow so I'm going to try some acetone you know, the acetone definitely works quicker now this is some same brand it's goop but this doesn't have the grit in it to, or the pumice but I'm going to give it a try too just for the heck of it well there's a comparison acetone definitely works better the goop without the pumice not too well and the goop with the pumice a little more aggressive it, it works pretty good just just takes a while to scrub it now I'm gonna try one more thing and that's alcohol alcohol works pretty well Acetone is definitely the best to use the acetone because it cuts right through this really easy. Still feels sticky where I use the acetone, but once I put the hand cleaner on top of that and clean it, it feels smooth. So probably 10 feet finished now and kind of got a system going I'm using the acetone first and that gets probably 90% of the old crud off then I'm just going back with the paper towel and the hand cleaner no brush and just wiping it on and that gets a lot more of it off
Well, we got it cleaned off, at least the first trip. So we'll go back over it one more time with the hand cleaner. Last thing I'll be doing is putting this ceramic coating. Uh, I use this on my old car. It does make the paint shine really good and gives it some protection too. So why not try it? I don't think it'll hurt a thing to put it on this cable. Just using a microfiber cloth. Now that I have the cable cleaned up and it's ready to be installed here on this CRT, I really need to do something with this base. There's just no way that that end will go through this base. All right, there's the audio jack. So. Got it loose. As you can see here on the bottom of the base, this is several pieces of wood that's just glued together. And that's where they've separated where the joints are. And looking at this cable, I noticed the blue wire from this side see the cable split once it gets up to the CRT and the replacement I have is the same way but they have this blue wire around this section but I'm thinking they're doing that to hold all of this together I think that's all that's doing I don't think it has anything to do with signal quality or anything like that but I think they just wrapped them two wires around this gray cable and that helps hold these together where they come up through here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this old wire off. I'll leave some of the color showing on each cable. And I have schematic to go by too, but I think if we just clip it like this, then we can tell where each cable goes. We put the other cable back on. Now I noticed here too, this black and gray cable are twisted together. Uh, we'll make sure we do that. Make sure we put the replacement cable back the same way. Got the two audio wires going to this jack down here. So we'll clip them. All right, unhook the wa yoke wires, the yellow and that white right there, and then the green yoke wire goes to that resistor right there. So we're ready to pull this out. All right, much easier. Now I can turn my attention to this. And with all the wires out of the way, I'm gonna take this off and do some polishing on it. All right, just three screws that held this ring on. And I think this has to go on a certain way, so I marked it. Put a sharpie mark there and there because it has the three threaded holes that those screws that hold the base go into. So in order for the audio jack to be turned right, just marked it just in case. So we'll put it back the same way. And looks like we have four screws. Let's see if we can polish this up. Well, that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. 
a really bad spot right there. Luckily, that's in the back because this this is what you'll see from the front most of the time. But it is what it is. And I think the paint will just flake off. I'll try to work on these joints. Possibly put some glue in there and clamp them, pull them back together. If not, I can put some wood filler. And I'm just taking the, the smooth side of this pick blade. And like that. Here's the bottom of the, the base. And it just attaches with three screws. This is just it's made out of masonite. This is covered up. So no need to sand that and worry about that. Well, clamp didn't work. Just was no way of pulling as big a separation as there was in some of those joints. So we went to wood filler. There's what I used. Called good filler. Water-based, so sand's easy. And that's just the first coat, and I even put some on the bottom too. Trying to fill in those joints from top to bottom, if possible. Okay, after a bit of sanding, got the gaps closed up. And the more I look at this, the more I think I'm just going to either finish it. It's just a polyurethane. Let me put some water on it to show you what it looks like. That's what we're going to do. After doing some research, I did find that Phil Cole had some of them that were gold, which I'm assuming this one was when it was new. But they also had some that were just a wood, natural wood. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. And I'm just going to use a clear satin. Uh, we'll see how that looks. If it doesn't have enough shine, I have some gloss that I can spray on it. Let's try this and see see how it looks. First you put the brass colored retaining base fastens to the CRT brackets and then this metal plate is what the wood base and fastens to. Three screws that go through the base into that metal ring. Now the cable ran up to the back of the CRT. First I want to mount this audio jack back in here. the wires up to the jack okay audio jack hooked up and there's some new felt put on the base just use some Loctite that's a spray adhesive you spray the material you're going to attach and then you also spray the, the surface you're going to attach material to you wait about five minutes and then you stick it on and it sticks good it's on there well only thing I need to do is punch some holes here here and then where the three screws go check well everything is hooked back up so let's get the chassis over here and see if this 
25 foot cable works. We're all hooked up. And we got a pretty good picture. Considering we haven't done any restoration on the chassis itself, looks really good. All right, so next thing we'll do is pull the circuit board out, recondition it, and then we still have to do the electrolytics and change a few things on the bottom of the chassis, thermistor and that three section resistor, a couple of things. But happy with my progress today. There's just some of the some of the connections. There's 15 solder connections, counting the audio jack. And there it is, and it works. I've checked it <clears throat> while I was connecting this cable. I did change this network that came with the kit that I ordered and there's a couple of paper caps I changed out. This electrolytic I just restuffed it. So on to the chassis restore next. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.